Let's talk about one of the apps keeping many engaged in this time of staying at home and social distancing, and it is called TikTok. It is a video sharing network platform used to create short dance, lip sync, talent videos owned um, by a Beijing-based company. I almost, I'm almost sure you have seen one of these videos or know someone who is active on TikTok. Over the weekend, American singer and actor Tyrese Gibson shared a video of senators just Holly and Rick Scott introducing legislation to ban TikTok from government devices. Have a look. TikTok was the most downloaded app of 2019, more than any other app in the country. More teenagers are on TikTok now than use Facebook. It counts millions and millions and millions of Americans as users, but it is owned by a Chinese company that includes Chinese Communist Party members in leadership, and it is required under Chinese law to share user data with Beijing. And TikTok has admitted that it has sent user data to China. To put it bluntly, this is a major security risks, risk for the American people. And what kind of data is TikTok collecting as it runs on our phones? A heck of a lot more than you would think. Images, of course, that users post. But TikTok also collects information about the messages that you send, about the apps that you use, the other apps on your phone. It collects the sites that you visit. It collects your search history. It collects your keystrokes. It collects your location data. It stores all of this and maybe lots, lots more. And I can tell you, as the father of two small children uh, who already have many of their friends on social media, even though they're quite young, I find this absolutely horrifying, and we know that it's a national security risk. Since our last hearing on this subject, the Pentagon, the Department of State, the Department of Homeland Security, and the TSA have all banned their employees and service members from using TikTok on government devices. In fact, the Pentagon even went so far as to say that employees should have their children uninstall TikTok from their personal devices. That's pretty extraordinary. But actually, it's only prudent. And that's why today I'm announcing I will introduce legislation to ban the use of TikTok by all federal employees on all federal government devices. This is a necessary step to protect the security of the United States and the data security of every American. Okay, so like he said, prior to that, the State Department, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Defense and TSA have already banned TikTok on federal government devices due to cybersecurity concerns and possible spying by the Chinese government. The question for us as Africans is, should we be worried? What do we have to protect? Joining us to answer these questions is tech, media, and communications expert Wally Adetono. Hi, Wally. Hello. Hello. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How morning, are Wally. You How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. And you? Fine, thank you. Okay, so based on your own research, what is the significant difference between TikTok and other apps like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? Okay, yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, well, like I was discussing with a friend yesterday, so basically um, every other social media app, um, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram inclusive, they all collect user data here. Yeah? And I'll start this conversation by bringing us back to the Cambridge Analytical um, saga that happened sometime around um, 2019, where Facebook owner had to pay about $5 billion penalty. I and mean, that is for um, violating consumers' privacy. So ever since then, app owners have been extremely careful not to violate all these rules by, I mean, and so that they don't pay such huge fines. But what they do basically, so take Facebook as, as an instance. Facebook will tell you the kind of data they are collecting from you. So if you go to your settings, you see they tell you they are collecting your username, they are collecting your um, address, they are collecting your IP, they are collecting your email addresses, yeah? And you have the option of selecting which of these data to share with um, these platforms. Same thing for uh, Twitter and Snapchat and all the likes. But um, in the case of TikTok, however, what they do is they do not give you the option, right? As I said in that video, um, TikTok is, uh, is being owned by Chinese. But what they do basically is they tell you this is the data we collect and this is what we do with your data. They don't give you the option of selecting what to share with them. But then again, so the question now comes back to what do these guys do with the data? Let's not forget that 
most of these apps are free apps here. Yeah? So they need to they need that data to market and also sell the from the platform here yeah? to other users. So based on the kind of information you consume as a user, the website you visit and the relevant content you share on your on your um, social media platform, they use this to create meaningful insight. They also use it to create meaningful insights for researchers and prospective investors. So let's let's call them a slack, but in the case of the US, I can understand. The, I mean, when they say it's a privacy breach because because of the uh, obvious um, um, fights between US and, and, and China, yeah. But I think what they can do, which they've imposed, is to ban it on, on government devices if they see it as a threat. Um, us um, Nigerians and Africans. Um, since America is worried and introducing this type of legislation, should we bother or is it that we have nothing to worry about or protect? Uh, well, in the light of that, I, I feel what we should do as um, Africans, okay, let me say Nigerians, is we need to pay more attention to data privacy issues. Yeah, Before we sign up on any social media app, we need to carefully read and understand their data privacy policy. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, in, in this world, in, in this part of the world, people don't even pay attention to all of those details. I, I can imagine even you, Elsie, you don't read any terms of agreement on all these apps. You just sign up. But uh, based based on this information, so many people have so many people have gone back to retrace their steps and deleted the apps, and even myself inclusive, deleted the app and locked out of the of the app on their platform because of this fear. So what we can do basically is sit down, read these privacy policies. If it sits well with us, why not? Fine, fine go on. use the app. But if you feel you don't want to share any of this any of this information, then just log off the platform. But let's take a, let's bear it in mind that. This is not just about TikTok. Every other social media app collects our data in one way or the other. But the only uh, difference with TikTok is they don't give you the option of selecting what to share with them, like I said earlier. And let's not forget, TikTok is the fastest social media platform in the world. So regardless whatever sanction or whatever uh, rule the US government is putting in place, it can't stop TikTok from growing. From the figures, TikTok has about 1.5 billion so far and over 800 million active users, which is like the it's, it's leading ahead of Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and, and the likes. All right. Thank you so, so much, Wale. So let me just write that we just need to pay attention to data privacy. And thanks to the likes of Nita in Nigeria that are doing a whole lot in ensuring app consumers and, and owners of apps pay attention to all of those details. All right. Thank you so much. Benny, yeah. are you on TikTok? Um, no, I'm not. And, and I, don't, I don't think I'm going to get on it. As a third-party user, any, any, any app, any social media app that's not going to give me the options of what details to share and what not to share, I think I should be wary of it. And if U.S. Leg is passing this into legislation, I think it calls for us to look more into it, what exactly the breach of privacy is. You know, I should be able to say I don't want to share this piece of information. And like you already said and also said during legislation, they don't give you those options. So mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's something more to it. Let's, let's not, you know, everything can always be taken at face value, you know, for my Market purposes, advertisement purposes. I'm some type of a conspiracy theorist, you know. And so I, I try to look just beneath. I try to read in between the lines. And so I think my, my security, my privacy is key to me. I should be able to tell you what I want to tell you. Yeah. And where I don't have that option, I, I feel some kind of um, I feel threatened, you know. And so yes, is it is it a security threat? Yes. Is it a cyber a, a cyber threat? Yes. And so people should be given the opportunity to share what they feel they want to share out there. And where that is not given. You, you go on it at your own peril, at your uh, own detriment. Okay. I wish you had more time, but yeah. all I can say is I've actually deleted the app. Like you said, I need to have my own option. Oh, yes. So the decision is basically yours.